Hey, friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you how to set up and save your very own Logic Pro template, a template that's preloaded with your favorite plugins, your favorite instruments, routing, everything you need to get right down to creating so that when you sit in front of your Mac and open up Logic Pro, you don't just start from an empty project and then have to load all these things one at a time. Instead, you open up Logic Pro and your template is the thing that pops up, preloaded, ready for you to start producing, recording, mixing, whatever it is that you do. So let's dig into that right now. All right, I've opened up Logic Pro and I've loaded an empty project. And what I'm gonna be doing is, is I'm gonna load into this empty project all the tracks, plugins, routing, and instruments that I'll be needing for my recording template. Most of the tracks in this project will be audio tracks. Your workflow might be different, but nonetheless, the procedure for loading the track types that you'll need, the instruments, the plugins, the routing is exactly the same. Saving a template is exactly the same. And then the procedure for specifying under the general settings for Logic Pro to open that template every time you sit down and open up Logic Pro will be exactly the same as well. On screen, we have the new tracks dialog, which is what pops up every time you open up a new empty project in Logic Pro. And I intend to load nine audio tracks into this empty project. That's gonna be six audio tracks for drums, one for bass guitar, one for electric guitar, and then one for a vocalist. So you can see right at the bottom here, we have the option to set number of tracks to create. So I'll type in the number of tracks I want, which is nine. And then from there, I'm gonna click on this ascending option, and I'm going to set the audio input to input one of my audio interface. And what's gonna happen here when I click on create, is that Logic is going to load not only nine audio tracks, but it's going to set the audio input for each audio track in ascending order from input one to input nine. Check it out. Awesome. Now we have nine audio tracks. If we open up the mixer by pressing X on our Mac's keyboard, you can see that the input for each channel strip for each corresponding track has been assigned one of the inputs for my audio interface and it goes all the way up to analog eight, and then it switches to one of the other inputs on my audio interface, which is connected to my Apogee Ensemble. Now I do wanna customize a couple things. First, audio seven here, which will be my bass guitar. I wanna to set to an instrument input, so I'm gonna set it to input 15. Audio eight will be for rhythm guitar, which I'll set to guitar two. And for my vocal track and channel strip, I wanna set that to input seven. Next up, I wanna set the input on channel strip one to be in stereo as the track and channel strip for audio one will be for drum overheads. And I like to record them in stereo. Right, so I'm going to delete audio track two here because I no longer need a separate track and channel strip for the right overhead. So I'm just gonna press delete on my Mac's keyboard. Perfect. Now I'll name my tracks and channel strips so I know exactly who goes to what when I open up this template. So I'm gonna type in OH for overheads and then click tab to move to the next track and channel strip. I'll name this kick, snare, rack tom, floor tom, bass, guitar, and vocals. And of course we could give each and every one of these tracks its own icon. So I'll give everybody Drum icon, obviously we can give each and every track its own unique icon. All I'm doing is clicking on a channel strip or track, holding shift, clicking the next one to select multiple tracks and channel strips. So then I can set the icon for each of these, right? So I'll set this to a bass guitar and then a microphone icon for the vocals. From here, you're probably gonna wanna load a couple of plugins or even an entire channel strip worth of plugins onto different channel strips so that you have your plugins that you like to use at the ready. They're right there, ready to go, so you can just create, not have to worry about menu diving. So let's open up the mixer. First, I'll select the overhead track, hold shift and select my floor tom track. The first plugin I'll load, because my intent here is to record live drums with multiple microphones will be to load the gain plugin from the utility section. 
And this way, I can flip the polarity for any one of the drum tracks in the event that the polarity of one drum track is out of phase with all the other tracks. Obviously, some keen eye observers will notice I have a polarity button already in the audio device controls on each channel strip. Some manufacturers, albeit very few, take advantage of the audio device controls in Logic Pro, which provides you with direct controls over your audio interface from Logic Pro itself. So I could just flip polarity using this. However, assuming you don't have a compatible interface with a polarity switch on the interface itself, well, you could just use the game plugins instead. Okay, next up, I want to load a basic EQ. So I'll just select all the channel strips once again and click on the EQ thumbnail to quickly load the channel EQ to every track. Awesome. And then if we click on the gain reduction meter here, we can load a compressor. Awesome. Now I do recommend any time that you're recording a live instrument with a microphone that you don't focus a ton of energy on EQing and compressing and adding all these effects to try to spruce up the sound of that recorded instrument. Instead, you should get it right at the source. Focus on everything else before adding plugins to try to make an instrument sound better. But of course, a little bit of EQ or compression or reverb can help tighten things up and help you feel more immersed in the song itself. That's okay. It's just not a great idea to rely on plugins to dramatically transform and fix a track, which really could have been fixed in the recording session itself. Of course, customize your plugins and instruments the way that you like to use them. For example, I really like the Studio FET compressor for snare tracks. Next, let's load a bass patch in Logic Pro for a bass guitar. I'll open the library by pressing Y on my Mac's keyboard. And right under electric guitar and bass, I'm going to load a crunch bass, and that'll be the Razor bass patch. Actually, I have my bass plugged in. Let's take a listen to this patch, which is pretty crunchy, pretty aggressive. All right, so we got our bass track. Obviously, it's a little crazy on the distortion, but we can obviously just adjust the mixer because one set in the splitter here is just the clean DI signal. So if we set it to B, take a listen. Right, and then we can blend some of that monster fuzz. Cool, so I'm pretty happy with that because I grew up making punk rock music. So I love the sound of an aggressive bass guitar. Next up, let's get our guitar situated. So I'm gonna use the right arrow on my Max keyboard to navigate to my guitar channel strip, go back to the electric guitar and bass section of the library, and we'll set this to the old school punk patch. And let's try out this patch with my guitar. Cool, another opening riff from a song I absolutely love. Perhaps someone out there will recognize it. Cool, and then obviously we have our vocal track and channel strip. And just to keep things moving along, I'm gonna go into the library again. Under voice, I'm gonna select the natural vocal patch. All right, so now the vocal has been loaded with not only a channel EQ, as well as a compressor and another EQ, but we've also got a couple of buses being sent to some aux channel strips that provide some reverb. So now we have a couple of reverbs in place to provide some vibe to help the vocalist feel a little more part of the song and mix. So let's close the library, close the mixer. So obviously if you use software instruments and facilities such as drummer, drum machine designer, or anything else, go right ahead, load an instance of drummer, load some of those software instruments that you like to use. For example, I'll load an instance of a software instrument. And you know, there's actually a really awesome Mellotron patch from the Watch the Sound Producer pack under keyboards. If we click on Mellotron flutes here, it's an instance of sampler. I'm assuming having sampled a Mellotron in the possession of Mark Ronson, but take a listen to this. Mm -hmm. 
It's actually super sick. I love the sound of this Mellotron in Logic. Cool, so we have our tracks loaded, the inputs set for each audio track, our plugins, our routing, our presets, our software instruments, everything's ready to go. Now we just need to save our project as a template. To do that, let's go right up to file at the top and go down to save as template. And right here, we'll call this band recording template. And then I'll press return to save. Right, so now if we go up to file and go to new from template, we're just gonna close our project. We won't save. Right in the project chooser window, you should see a category called my templates. And there we have it, our band recording template. Let's go ahead and open it up. Oh yeah, everything ready to go. And for all the plugins that seem to be dimmed, that's because there's no audio living on those tracks. And so those plugins are inactive until we select a track. So let's select our vocal track. There we go. The plugins and the routing become active when we're ready to use it. Cool. So you have your template, you're ready to go. But now we want Logic to open this template automatically every time you open up Logic Pro on your Mac. Well, that's easy. Let's go up to the top menu bar, go to Logic Pro, go down to settings and go over to general. And under the project handling tab, you should see options for startup action. And if we click, you can switch this option from whatever it is on your system to create new project using the default template. Let's select. And now we have the option to set the default template. So we can select a template and under my templates, we can select our band recording template or whatever you've named your template. Let's go ahead and choose. All right, so we can see the startup action is now set to open the default template and that default template is the band recording template. So if we close Logic Pro, and then reopen Logic Pro. There you have it. The template that we created is opened up automatically upon startup of Logic. You can create as many templates as you like, but you can only select one template to be the default template that opens at startup. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you for more next week here on Wide Logic Pro Rules. Thanks so much and take care.